In this video, you're gonna learn six things you should absolutely know before shooting your first ever music video. So over the last five years, I've shot and edited a ton of music videos and I've even gotten the chance to work with some really famous artists. When it comes to just being creative and focusing on my craft as a filmmaker, music videos might just be one of my favorite things to shoot. Not only that, but music videos are a great way for beginner filmmakers to get started with their career, making money and having a ton of fun doing it. The reason behind this is because in every state, city, town, even the small villages, there are people that have a passion for music living there. In other words, there's almost always a market with the demand for your talent. The beginner musicians will have smaller budgets, but that makes sense for you because you may just be starting out as well and you could work with the smaller budgets. As you grow and start shooting more and more music videos, they will naturally help market you and your business. So as as time goes on, your budgets will grow bigger and bigger and you'll be working on cooler videos. Recently, I shot a video for a local Boston musician and I've worked with him a ton throughout my entire career. His name is Rhett Price. He was being featured in a New York Times article and he asked me if I could shoot a music video to highlight one of his new songs to go along with the article. We decided to keep things really simple and we actually filmed the entire process of me filming him for this music video so that we could create this video sharing our top six tips for shooting your first music video. So as always, let's dive into it. Tip number one, location is everything. There's a reason why there are people out there in the film world whose entire job is to search and find locations for film sets. It's because locations can add or take away so much from the final product. You absolutely wanna make sure your music videos are filmed at locations that will really support the performance of the song. Don't just pick a random field or an empty office building and hope things will go well. Do the research beforehand and find really cool locations to shoot at. Not only this, but almost all the time, you wanna film at multiple locations. I typically do a minimum of three and with this video in particular we actually did five. Under the bridge with graffiti on the edge of the water, city skyline, willow tree at night, and the concrete jungle right in the middle of the city. The more locations we have for these performance style videos, the more we can keep our viewers engaged. A good example of this was a music video from a few years ago that Rhett and I did covering the song California Love. In that video we traveled all over California going to different iconic locations that we knew people would recognize as California. The relevance between the song that we were covering and the visuals themselves made the video a lot more engaging. Now, once you get to each location, you want to play the song from a Bluetooth loudspeaker and have the artist sing or perform along out loud to the actual track. You don't really want your artist to lip sync because it makes syncing everything and making it look natural in the editing room much harder. One reason why we do this is because it helps them stay perfectly in line with the actual song. The second reason why we do this is because we can record scratch audio from our camera's internal microphone and then in the editing software, I use Premiere Pro but you can really do this with any of them, you can use the synchronize feature to match the scratch audio to the actual song that you're doing the music video for, that way everything's perfectly synced. Now before I go into tip number two, you already know what I'm going to ask here, please take a moment to ever so graciously smash that like button if you're enjoying our content, it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and it helps us pump out more content so if you're enjoying smash that button but nonetheless tip number two is to do multiple takes at each location with unique camera angles and focal lengths you don't want to rely on just one take for each location the artist could easily mess up without you realizing and now you're stuck in the editing room trying to work around this mistake that wasn't even your fault by doing multiple full takes we ensure that between all of them you will have one solid run through the entire song at that one location. Now if you can do this at each location, you're really doing yourself a favor in the editing process. Now what's even more important than simply filming multiple takes at each location is to film multiple takes from different camera angles with different focal lengths. At almost every location of every music video I've ever shot, we try to make sure to get at least one wide, 
one medium, and one tight shot. This gives the viewer a much better perspective on things and keeps our videos dynamic. This way we're not cutting from one wide shot to another wide shot, we're switching up the focal range and going from wide to tight, which is more exciting. The absolute worst thing you can do is film multiple takes at one location and have all those takes look exactly the same. Get creative and make sure each one is really different. Another helpful mini tip here is do the same thing with movement. If you film one take relatively static, film the next one with more emphasized movement. Film handheld with a gimbal on a tripod. Really, this tip is all about diversity between takes. It's gonna make your videos look that much better. Our next tip, number three, is a big one, and it is to focus as much as you can on mastering lighting. And I say this is a big one because I have a bone to pick with filmmakers. So many times, and myself included here, we look at the footage we just captured and we get bummed out because it doesn't look as good as we thought it was gonna look. So what do we do? We blame our camera, we blame the lens we're using and so on. When in reality, like really nine times out of 10, it has to do with bad lighting. You could take a brand new $6,000 camera, hit record, and if the lighting is bad, the footage is gonna look terrible. So rather than go out and throw your money away on new gear, focus on learning and studying the art of film lighting. I guarantee you nothing will help you improve image quality more than this. And also with that concept in mind, don't think you need to go out and drop a ton of money on lights. This music video in particular, all we did was use natural and practical light sources. No professional lights whatsoever. Instead, we just had to choose our locations accordingly so that wherever our artist was performing, they had decent light. This usually means placing your subject in the shade during broad daylight to soften things, filming earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon when the lighting looks better and is just more even to begin with, or finding natural or practical sources of light that exist in the scene already and positioning your artist near those so everything looks good. For example, in this music video, when we were filming the night scene in the middle of the city, we had a street light acting as our key light and then the traffic lights in the back gave us those really cool flares and also kept changing colors on us, which was another cool element to spice up the scene. This wasn't just some happy coincidence by any means. I had actually walked the entire area the night before with my girlfriend to test out different locations and see where I potentially wanted to film. Now on the flip side of natural lighting, when you do have the chance to introduce professional studio lights to your music videos, you definitely want to do it because it really does add just so much to the scene. Take a look at these shots for example. We had studio lights, practical lights, flashing lights, and to top it off, a smoke machine. Long story short, with music videos and really anything you're filming, Filming, you always want to consider lighting. And real quick, one final point I'll add to this tip, something I wish I was told when I was just starting. In scenes where your subject is moving around a lot, don't necessarily think about how do I light my subject because they're moving and you can't always move your lights with the subject. Instead, think about how do I light the room so that it flatters the subject. Evaluate your scene as a whole and look for the naturally dark areas in the naturally bright areas. Are they too dark and too bright? If so, you're you're gonna need to position lights to balance out the scene and make things look more natural so that wherever your artist is, whether they're there, 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 anywhere in the room, they're gonna look good. On top of that, ask yourself, what lighting can I add to the scene that will make things look better even if it doesn't impact the subject whatsoever? For instance, in this scene, if you look at that warm desk lamp behind me, that has zero impact on me. It's not casting any light on me in particular, but it is hitting the room and it's adding color contrast to the scene as a whole. So take that as your example. All right, moving on here, tip number four is to plan specific transitions for your videos. As you probably already know, Trendy transitions are all the rage right now in the filmmaking world, and they are for a reason. When done right, they can be pretty dang cool. And as a general rule of thumb, the more you plan out your transitions in camera, the better they will be when you edit things together. Sure, you can use a preset pack like this one from Video Hive, which is exactly what I did to get that kind of hit slash shake transition here right at the drop of the song. But again, in camera almost always looks better. Here's an example of an in camera transition we did on this most recent music 
music video shoot. It takes place in the intro sequence of the video when we're switching from the actual bag for the violin to the first performance scene. There's zero trickery or special editing to here. It's literally just a hard cut with a small speed ramp. We're able to have it be that simple because we accomplished it all in camera. The first shot was filmed moving the camera down and whipping it faster towards the end, while the second shot was also moving the camera down with the whip motion at the beginning. The motion of these two shots lead right into one another and all we had to do is add that very slight speed ramp at the end of the first clip to really seal the deal. And the only way you're able to do this is if you plan beforehand and capture them in camera. Tip number five is to make sure your film style matches the energy of the song. While you're prepping for the shoot, you should listen to the song as many times as you possibly can. Shut your eyes while you're listening and really try to imagine how this song would look if it already had a video. Would it be fast with harsh cuts, slow and really steady? Obviously there are a million and a half different ways that you could look at it, but start to understand what that image is going to look like now prior to actually shooting. The worst thing you can try and do is force an unrealistic style onto a music video for a song that is completely different. So essentially Essentially, don't try and recreate your favorite music video that has a song completely the opposite in style, energy, and vibe than the song that you're currently working on. Here's a cool example of matching the energy of your filming style to the energy of the song. It's another example of me and Rhett. We were releasing a cover of a slow Valentine's Day song. I told Rhett to play the song at 2x speed. This way, when we filmed, I had the frame rate set to 60 frames per second so that I could slow down the footage in the editing room by 50% bringing his sped up performance back down to normal speed. This filming style won't just work for any song. It kind of has to have that slow and calming vibe to it. As soon as I heard the song that we were gonna cover though, I knew immediately that this was something we could do. So as with all of these tips, plan ahead and you'll be able to do some really cool things. Okay, so the final tip in today's video, tip number six, is similar to tip number six from our last video, which was how to film epic adventure commercials. And that is to always focus on storytelling. There is practically no form of content that can stand on its own as a series of pretty visuals with no story. Everything needs some element of storytelling in order to capture and keep our attention. When it comes to lyrical music videos, try your best to create a visual story that parallels that of the words themselves. In a performance music video, our job gets a little harder because there are no words to begin with. Either way, you can still try and pull as much inspiration from the song as you can, even if there are no words. Here's an example. When we we did a music video covering Post Malone's song Rockstar. We told the story of an artist watching himself thinking he's becoming a rock star and kind of becoming consumed with that image. With the California Love cover, the story was essentially the journey all around California. Now at the very least, if you really can't come up with a story, make sure that your video has a very distinct beginning, middle, and end. Without that, it's really not going to make sense to the viewer. Now that does it for our six tips and one thing I want to point out before this video is over, you might be thinking to yourself, this is a video for beginners shooting music videos, but you're using a red camera which costs like $30,000. Now that's totally true and a beginner won't have access to that camera, but what you should also know is that not a single one of these tips has anything to do with the camera itself. And that's because it's how we use our cameras, not the devices themselves, that really make up the quality of our work. I just had to cover that very quickly so that the keyboard warriors don't go crazy in the comments. Now if you're still watching at this point in the video, it's probably because you're really passionate about learning filmmaking. Maybe you want to make money doing this and turn your passion into a career, or maybe you're just looking to learn more about your passion and up your game as a filmmaker. Now that is awesome. The only issue is that you might be trying to do all of this on just YouTube alone. Now yeah, YouTube is absolutely great, but it's super time consuming and you miss out on a big part of the learning process. On YouTube, you find answers to the questions you're asking. But what about all of the questions you aren't asking? A lot of times it's the questions we're not asking in the associated info that's holding us back from getting to that next level. And on top of that, with YouTube, you spend all your time watching and none of your time practicing. Now this is exactly why we created 14 Day Filmmaker. It's a program that 
that was designed to fill all of those gaps and help you become the filmmaker you've been dreaming of. The course is over 100 video trainings in total and walks through the entire process of picking up a camera for the first time, mastering the fundamentals, developing your own personal style, kickstarting your career, and getting you to that next level. And on top of that, every day's worth of training comes with a specifically designed practice exercise so you avoid the pitfalls of YouTube where you're just watching content all day. You actually get out there and practice what you're learning. Because of all this, we're able to accomplish in 14 days what YouTube usually takes years to do. We answer all the questions, you get lifetime access, and it can be all yours for an insanely low price. If you are interested, there is a link below in the description of this video so you can check it out and see if it's a good fit for you. Other than that, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.